Hello tax students, this is Roy again with a video to update you for our last chapter, that's chapter number 7, regarding tax credits. And our textbook is based upon the tax rules for 2021. And the rules for that year were drastically changed because of the coronavirus pandemic tax credits were increased compared to the previous year, 2020. And of course, if you were to prepare a tax return um, soon, which is going to be for the year 2022, the rules are going to be different than 2021. In fact, some of the tax credits rules may revert back to 2020. That's the 2022 rules reverting back to the 2020 rules. So what I want to do is update you for um, four different credits that are discussed here in Chapter 7, and also one that was discussed way back in Chapter number 1. So let's take a look at our 1040 form here for the year 2021, and tax credits are reported back on page 2 in two different groups. If you remember in our discussion, we talked about non-refundable credits in this area here, including some coming from schedule number three. And the better credits down here, which are the refundable type, also coming from schedule number three. So the one I wanna focus on first is called this recovery rebate credit. So let me illustrate that out. Okay. We're talking about the recovery rebate credit. And for most taxpayers, they already got their, uh, this credit in advance before even filing a tax return. And the amount they got was called an economic impact payment, or some people called it um, stimulus payments, and there were three different economic impact payments. Two of them were paid in 2020, yeah, the first one and the second payment. And then the third payment was made in our year we're studying, 2021. For 2022, the coming tax season, there is no economic impact payment. So there's not going to be any related recovery rebate credit. So the amounts for the first two payments was ranging depending upon um, whether the taxpayer was married or not, the filing status, maybe the amount of qualifying dependents the taxpayer was claiming. So the amounts again could range from maybe as small as $500 each to $1,200 each. For the third economic impact payment in 2021, it was a lot simpler because for each person being claimed on or reported on the taxpayer's tax return, they got a larger $1,400 economic impact payment. And the amounts they got paid in advance before even filing a return was really based upon a previous year's tax return. Whatever income they reported or filing status or dependents they, they claim, then was determined by the IRS to, de, to see this amounts being paid out, again, per person, yeah, per person. Now, it is possible that a taxpayer didn't get the correct economic impact payment. For example, if there was a child born in 2021 that was not reported on their 2020 return, they would not have received that $1,400 economic impact payment for that child. So what the taxpayer has to do is file their um, 2021 tax return claiming this credit, this recovery rebate credit of $1,400 for the missing economic impact payment. And these payments can be adjusted based upon the taxpayer's income. Yeah, It may be phased out for high income taxpayers. So let's go back to the 1040 form. And again here, if you didn't get your 
um, economic impact payment. You would then report it here in line 30 as a recovery rebate credit, a refundable credit. So let's take a look at another credit. Okay, let me draw a line here to separate it. This one is the child tax credit and the other dependent credit. And going back to the 1040 form, if you remember back here on page one, in the section for dependents, we would list out each dependent and whether that dependent was a child qualifying the taxpayer for the child tax credit or other types of dependents would be eligible for this other dependent credit. Now back in 2020, each child tax credit, each qualifying child would allow the taxpayer to claim $2,000 of credit. But then in 2021, it increased to $3,000. And if the child was under age six, you would tack on another $600 or $3,600 per qualifying child. The other dependent credit for 2020 and 2021 stayed the same. It's a flat $500. So let me illustrate that out here on my scratch paper. For 2020, for each qualifying um, child, that's a child for 2020 under age 17. In other words, you didn't reach your 17th birthday for that year. You would get $2,000 per qualifying child. For a qualifying relative in 2020, other, let's say other uh, relative, you would get a $500 credit. For 2021, the rules changed. Yeah? For a qualifying child, the credit is under $3,000. Is $3,000. For a child 17 or under age, yeah? or really under 18. Again, this over here, the, uh, the age, let's see had to be under um, age age 17. Over here, it had to be under or equal to age 17 to get the $3,000 credit. And if the qualifying child was under age 6, you would tack on another $600 to this $3,000 for that child. The other relative credit would still be this $500, which could be a child, but that not falling under this qualifying child section. Okay. And the credit could phase out depending upon whether the income is high for our taxpayers. Let's go back to the 1040 form. And that qual uh, child tax credit and credit for other dependent would be reported here in line 19. And here you can see it's non-refundable. So you can only use that credit to the extent you have a tax up here. And if any other extra credit you have, generally it would be wasted. But for the child tax credit, if you have anything left over, maybe part of that credit can be moved down here in the refundable section as an additional child tax credit. In either case, you can see you may have to use this Schedule 8812, this Schedule 8812. So if we take a look at that schedule, here, figuring out the um, child dependent care credit, you can see this $500 for the other relative, yeah? And again, you only can use it to the extent of the tax because it's a non-refundable credit. But in the case of the child tax credit, anything that you cannot use, and you can see a phase out based upon income over here. Let's see if I can find it here. The unused child tax credit up to 
$1,400 right here per child can be refunded. And now they call it an additional child tax credit. So you got to go through this form that has a couple pages worth of calculations. But if you're using tax software, almost all of this is going to be calculated for you automatically. Again, back here on the 1040 form, if you're unable to use all of that child tax credit, well, if you cannot use this other dependent credit here, it's going to be wasted. If you cannot use all of this child tax credit, that may be carried down over here to the additional child tax credit. Now, if we were looking at the next tax season, we're here preparing 2022 tax returns, the rules for child tax credits is probably going to revert back to what we had in 2020. Yeah. So even though um, you're learning this right now, 2021, you may have to revert back to a prior year rule now to calculate the child and other dependent credit for 2022. Let's take a look at another credit that don't get it confused with the one we just covered, but this one is called um, Child and Dependent Care Credit. This is a credit that taxpayers get if they pay for a provider, a care provider to take care of their child, qualifying child, or dependent so the taxpayers can go to work. Let's see how, where it's reported on the um, 1040 form. It's probably in this schedule number three here. Yeah? And maybe if it's refundable, which it was for 2021, it's coming also from the schedule number three and re uh, posted here on the 1040. But let's take a look at the form that calculates out the credit called 2441. And again, for the current year of our textbook, 2021. So if you have one person you're taking care of, up to $8,000 of costs can be reported here on this form. And if it's for two or more people being taken care of, so the taxpayer can go, go to work, up to 16000 for the year 2021 can be reported here. And you would multiply this cost by a certain percentage. And the percentages, I believe, have really increased based upon the taxpayer's income. Here, if you go over this income limit, you can see the credit is going to be zero. But for most people, for the year 2021, if they were paying child and dependent care costs, the credit had uh, increased a lot for that year. And for the year 2021, for most people, this credit is refundable. In prior years, 2020 and earlier, and probably now reverting back or loss to 2022, the credit is going to be non-refundable. Here you can see for 2021, especially for most people, the credit is going to be refundable. Okay, so that's the that's the uh, child and dependent care credit. Yeah, don't confuse it with the child tax credit. One more credit I want to go through is the earned income credit. Now keep in mind, I have separate videos for each one of these credits based upon the 2020 rules, Yeah, which again is probably going to be reverting back to now in the year 2022. The earned income credit, as you can see, is down here in the uh, refundable section. Yeah, So it's based upon if the taxpayer has work income, they call it earned income, like this wage income or business income. And you would take that earned income and you would take this adjusted gross income and you would look it up on earned income credit tables in the instructions to the 1040 form. Let's see if I can find it here real fast. Here, these tables here, you would look up the taxpayer's earned income um, and adjust the gross income figure, and you go across the amount of income from the first two columns and go across based upon their filing status here or here and the amount of qualifying children they're claiming. Yeah? You don't have to have 
qualifying children for certain low income levels yeah like i believe it's if it's under 11000 you may get a credit yeah under 11000 with zero qualifying children you may have a credit also the rules said that um, if you were under age uh, 25 and didn't have any children you wouldn't qualify for the earned income credit if you were over age 65 65 or older you wouldn't qualify the, for the credit if you didn't have any qualifying children that a rule for age disappeared in 2021 and it probably will come back for 2022 so again you will only qualify for the credit if you were over 25 or under 65 and uh, zero within certain income limits but notice if you claim more children if you have income up to a certain level the credit will increase and the credit is all refundable and it had increased a lot for the year 2021 okay so that's all i want to say for credits here again if you want more detailed calculations take a look at the other videos I had linked for our chapter number seven at our Laulima class site.